Yes, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes. Avant! Lion! He wish. Yes! He wall! He mena so! Yes! Ready! Commandment! Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? Have you ever thought to yourself that you wish you could use the absolutely monstrous capabilities of the sharpshooter in the second age, but looked at the long rifles card and thought it just wasn't good enough? Have you ever played USA and tried to fight it out in Age 2, only discover that USA kinda sucks at it? Well, boy, do I have the build order for you today. In this in-depth strategy guide, I will be going over one of my USA strategies, as always, completely crafted and tested by me. In the strategy, we will be going over the Age 2 Gold Army strat, as I like to dub it. We will be going in-depth on each step of the strategy, why each step is done, when to do the strategy, the various properties of the units we are employing, and how the strategy came to be, what variations you can make of the strategy, and whatever else I can think of. This build order is designed to fight in the Second Age and maximize the efficiency of our units. This is a great build order to learn in general uh, because of its wonderful versatility, as your ability to make really whatever you need for any given situation is unparalleled compared to other USA strategies you might also find on this channel. As with all build orders, your score will lag behind your opponent as most other civs in the game have strong age 2 boom options, but we will come out victorious by being careful with our mass and having superior unit quality. That's just a thing that USA suffers from in the early game. This strategy is designed to be able to be performed with any unit you please as the USA's arsenal, except for the state militia, as they cost wood and therefore cannot be massed with this build order, as you guys will see later on. Originally, I actually designed this strategy with Hussar in mind, trying to find a way to bring out Age 2 Huss as USA to throw enemies off balance, and while it worked, and works for regulars as well, my favorite method of using the strategy is actually to use sharpshooters. But if those don't do it for you, you can even do Carbine Cavalry pretty effectively at this strategy if you're fighting somebody who's going to mass lots of cavalry. But today we will be focusing specifically on what I think is the greatest unit to represent this build order's strengths and capabilities, and that is the Sharpshooter. For those unfamiliar, Sharpshooters are one of USA's two skirmisher units. They are not available until the Third Age normally, but are worth the wait. Sporting 40 range resistance, the highest heavy infantry multiplier of any skirmisher type at 2.5 versus heavy infantry, and a whopping 22 base range, upgraded to 23 in age 3 and 24 in age 4, this makes the sharpshooter the absolute highest range skirmisher unit type in the game except for longbowmen, and that's only after yeomen in age 3. Combining all these factors together and you have a very strong unit. If you're able to take advantage of all these bonuses in the Second Age, you have a recipe for disaster for your opponent. Sharpshooters are not without weakness, however, and there is a reason you don't see USA players usually mass these in Age 2. Uh, they used to have a poor firing animation that prevented them from kiting, but that has since been fixed and they can now kite just as well as any other skirm. They also only have 95 HP in Age 2, which is a little on the low side even for skirmishers, and needed to be guarded by anti-cavalry units like regulars. Or, more ideally, if you're in a team game, a teammate can mass anti-cavalry for you. Most notably, however, their biggest weakness is their very large cost. Sharpshooters cost only 40 food, but also cost an extremely hefty 75 coin each, which is, you know, a little high for the Second Age. Uh, for reference, Eagle Runners cost 75 food and 75 coin, only 35 more food compared to the Sharpshooter, and my Aztec Eagle Runner strategy I made specifically to mass them requires 35 entire villagers worth of economy in order to con uh, maintain constant production of full Eagle Runner pops and villagers and houses at the same time. By the way, I highly recommend that video if you, uh, I, I highly recommend that video as well, as the strategy is very fun and surprisingly effective if you know how to micro well. But, as you can imagine, requiring that much coin is not exactly ideal in the Second Age, as your villager count and gather rates are not enough to be able to mass sharpshooters constantly in the Second Age. Especially because before we're even able to train them, we need to send an entire shipment on the Long Rifles card. Uh, all these factors together make sharpshooters more or less impossible to train and mass right from the start of the game. Or does it? 
What if I were to tell you that there was a way to mass sharpshooters non-stop right from the second age while maintaining constant settler production and building our economy while we push into our unsuspecting opponents? That is the build order I bring to you today, ladies and gentlemen. So strap yourselves in and let's get this started. Now, the footage you see in the background is from a game I played against some randoms with a member of my Discord. Unfortunately, at the beginning of the game, my mic stopped working and nobody realized it until the game was over. So there were some serious miscommunication between us that resulted in me essentially 2v1ing both players' armies until he caught wind of what I was doing and joined the fray. And we had, had we been able to communicate properly, I might have even gone to the third age and we probably also would have ended the game sooner. From a recording perspective, however, this was kind of perfect, as it showcased a lot more of the strategy than if we just steamrolled them immediately. Our opponents were not the best, uh, as they critically failed to adapt and make more cavalry than they had, but still put up a fight and massed a good number of Sturm-type units for my sharpshooters to display their dominance over, so it worked out. Uh, but with these notes out of the way, let's finally start from the beginning. Just like with every strategy shown in depth so far, we will be doing a French immigrant start. This means gathering crates until we have our first vill queued, and then moving most vills to wood while one herds and one to two finish collecting the crates. Our objective is, of course, to construct one house and send the French immigrants. This provides three coureurs de bois, boosting villager attack, boosting villager HP and movement speed, as well as flipping their melee resistance to range. This will always be unequivocally the best start for 95% of USA strategies. Upon hitting the 200 required wood for French immigrants and having built the house, set all villagers to food and begin working towards age up. With this strategy, we will be aging up with Massachusetts. Now, this is surely going to raise some eyebrows, especially from USA players who probably spend most games either doing Virginia every time mindlessly, or the occasional Pennsylvania for coin trickle and unit HP increase. As stated in my Marines video, Virginia is a wonderful age-up option, as it provides the single strongest shipment in the entire game. However, it is not the best age-up option for age 2 play, as every single other age-up option has better and stronger age 2 capabilities compared to Virginia, largely due to the Virginia plans card being too slow for age 2 strategies. Delaying your first age 2 shipment by an entire 40 seconds when you need things fa at their absolute fastest is a, not a recipe for a good age 2 card. Many players instead opt for Pennsylvania, with the incredibly strong coin trickle and the HP upgrades your units later down the line if they want to do an, a an age 2 strategy. And while this does work, it's something I generally use just for outlaw and mercenary strategies, as the coin trickle still takes a decent amount of time to really kick in, and the name of the game here is, of course, speed. If your goal is to mass military early and start fighting on even terms with your opponent right from the get-go, Massachusetts is a much stronger option. Uh, this is because of a card we will be sending called Boston Tea Party. Now, I know half of you right now who play United States probably don't even know what this card does off the top of your head, and the other half who do know are probably angrily writing a comment right about now about how resource swapping cards are only useful for treaty, and they think I'm wasting their time. However, if that is you, then I hate to break it to you, but you are factually and unequivocally wrong, and I'm about to explain why. For those of you in the former, or for those of you who don't even play USA and you're just watching because you're curious, Boston Tea Party is the USA's resource swap card. It's like Fur Trade or any other card that swaps one resource for another with a percentage increase, or lack thereof if you play Inca. It swaps all of your food for 25% more coin. And while yes, you would be correct in saying that these cards are generally only used for treaty, USA specifically has special properties assigned to Boston Tea Party that changes things up. It's a federal card for a reason, after all, and it deserves its attention. The first special note of the shipment is that it arrives fast. This allows us to quickly get a large sum of coin, or carefully time our shipment to get an exact amount of resources we are after if you are using some sort of strategy that requires specific amounts of coin. I suspect this is a sleeper fast industrial card, and nobody knows it, but I haven't played around with it too much in that context, largely because Virginia still serves that role incredibly well. 
the other factor of Boston Tea Party that is much more significant than the first is that the conversion with the bonus 20, in addition to uh, the conversion with the bonus 25%, you also get a flat 350 coin added to the stockpile on top of that. And it's this exact reason that I began to suspect that this card was made with H2 in mind and started designing this strategy. You see, if they wanted this card to be just used for treaty, they would have never bothered with some trivial detail like a bonus 350 coin, as after a 40 minute treaty, getting an additional 350 on top of your 100,000 coin doesn't really matter that much. But on the other hand, in H2, that's huge. That's half of a 700 coin shipment by itself, not counting the actual conversion. Combine this with arriving fast, and if you build around this with H2 in mind, then this turns into essentially an H2 shipment that delivers an extra 1,000 resources, taking villager seconds into account. And not only does this 1,000 resources arrive in 5 seconds, but goes straight to your stockpile without you ever having to gather it, and results in you having more than 2,000 coins stockpiled pretty much right at the beginning of H2, allowing you to focus your entire economy on the much faster gathering food. This card is incredible and has been totally slept on by the community. In fact, it's probably the most slept on card in the entire game. I made a reddit post before talking about this card, uh, but it's different when you see it in action in video format. This kind of stuff is why I love USA and think that USA still has an element of uniqueness to them compared to Mexico. Although Mexico has both the federal state system and their own unique revolt mechanics, their federal cards are not quite as strong, and e even their own version of Boston Tea Party isn't as strong. Uh, on top of that, they get less XP gain. Uh, Mexico is based around entirely different unique mechanics for their core playstyle compared to USA, and it's wonderful that such similar civs on the surface can be so radically different in playstyle. Anyways, I digress. We're aging up to age 2 with Massachusetts. During transition, set four builds to wood and keep everyone else on food. The objective here is to construct a house ASAP and switch all four wood gatherers back over to food without over chopping. Uh, keep a careful eye on your wood and as soon as you reach 100, switch all wood gatherers back over to food and construct your house. Make sure you have villagers queued. It's important that we queue enough vills that we won't go idle even after losing all of our food at once. Uh, before you reach age 2, set your town center's waypoint to where you want to make a forward base so the military wagon goes there immediately. Now, the moment upon hitting you hitting age 2, ship long rifles. This card will allow us to build sharpshooters in the second age. If you plan on making regulars or hussar instead, save the shipment for the next card in the build order. Uh, if you plan on massing carbine cavalry, which does in fact work in the right situations, so don't be too quick to dismiss them, uh, during transition you would have gathered an additional 250 wood in transition and are now shipping Lee's Legion instead of long rifles for 6 carbine cavalry and the ability to train the mage too. My own personal recommendation, however, is the sharpshooters. In any case, get your forward base constructed and place the flag on it for faster construction and training. Have your vills gather the 200 XP crates as well. Your objective is to time your third, or second, depending, uh, shipment, Boston Tea Party. Uh, the shipment arrives in 5 seconds, so it's very easy to time correctly, but you want it to arrive just before your barracks finishes constructing. If you're sending Long Rifles or Lee's Legion, this probably just means queuing the shipment to arrive immediately after that shipment arrives, unless your forward base is particularly far forwards. Uh, simply due to the fact that a forward barracks will probably take almost the full 40 seconds of Long Rifles uh, to get where it needs to be and fully construct itself. If you're going Regulars or Hussars, you'll just have to watch your military wagon closely and do it manually. Immediately upon the shipment arriving, move 6-7 to seven vills over to wood ASAP. If you don't get a house up quickly, you will get popped very fast with this strategy. Make sure you're still able to queue vills and start training sharpshooters, or whatever you're training from the barracks. You'll notice now that you have a ludicrous amount of coin. In the footage you are seeing, I got 2,300 of it. And you'll have to start by only training one. Uh, just keep clicking the button as soon as you get the food you need. Uh, to, to, to queue more. 
but you should have absolutely zero trouble getting a full pop of five sharpshooters and never have to go idle at your town center uh, due to sharps costing only a measly 40 food each. Another reason Boston Tea Party has such amazing synergy with them. Uh, start getting big treasures and poking and prodding your opponent immediately. And just in general, be annoying. You have 22 range and it would be a travesty to not abuse it to its maximum potential. If you did everything right and got your house constructed fast enough, you should achieve a full three batches of five sharpshooters by 7 minutes and 15 seconds to 7 minutes and 30 seconds or so, uh, with absolutely zero signs of stopping your production of villagers or sharpshooters anytime soon. As you can see here, I was a teensy bit, a bit late getting my house up, and as a result, I only got 14 instead of 15. Uh, another house... Uh, you, uh, after another house, you can move a few villagers to coin and keep like 6 on wood and 11 to 13 on food. Uh, this way you can maintain enough food production for what we need and finally start collecting coin to keep our sharpshooters being trained. Uh, set new villagers from this point to coin for this foreseeable future unless you specifically need them elsewhere. Uh, you will run out of coin faster than you think with this strategy unless you start collecting it beforehand before you start to get low. Uh, do not make the mistake of over-depending on the massive nest egg you achieved several minutes ago. Uh, your next shipment after Boston Tea Party will be Springfield Armory. This allows us to get advanced arsenal upgrades for free in the Second Age and an arsenal wagon to go with it. The cost, of course, of them arriving at the cost, of course, of them arriving. Uh, and researching very slowly. Uh, start researching whatever upgrades apply to your units. In the case of sharpshooters, your first upgrade, without a doubt, needs to be counter-infantry rifling. Uh, this is to further take advantage of the fact that we have the highest heavy infantry multiplier of any skirmisher in the game, and this upgrade will allow us to have a 3.5 times multiplier against musketeers in the second age as early as like 8.5 to 9 minutes. Uh, follow this with marching drums for faster movement speed and the rest of the upgrades in whatever order you see fit. Once this arrives, your sharpshooters will have the capability to kill any musketeer in the game except for the super tanky ones like Janissaries and Sepoy in only three shots. Uh, those ones in particular require a fourth shot, but you basically don't even notice it. Of course, Soldados uh, still take six shots, but yeah, that's no big deal. Uh, your next shipment after this one will be Hamiltonian Economics. Similarly to Springfield Armory, this allows us to get massive amounts of upgrades completely free, only without the ridiculous increase to research time. This one is for market upgrades, and as soon as it arrives, you can build a market and get every upgrade available, uh, available there totally free with no penalties. It also improves the buy rates for food and wood. Uh, from here, the, 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 uh, the game is yours to take as you please. You can focus on aging and boom. You can train other military units like Hussar by building a stable, or really whatever you please. This strategy is extremely versatile and unit swap friendly. Upon hitting the third age, your sharpshooters will automatically be given veteran status, giving them 23 range and 20 whole base attack after the upgrade from the arsenal, uh, and 22 while under the flag. In a team game, you can rely on your allies to make anti-cavalry to cover you. However, in 1v1, naturally you will want to be mixing regulars and other units in your composition as the game continues to counter cav masses as well as siege buildings. However, this is extremely easy as your economy allows for essentially whatever you want in this strategy. Uh, in a 1v1 competitive game against an Ottoman player, I made sharpshooters, regulars, and hussar in age 2, went to age 3, got veteran C on all of them, made gatling guns, boomed out of 3 town centers, eventually that game went to age 4, and I even constructed 3 forts around his base. This build order is extremely flexible and surprisingly solid on the economics. Uh, you likely won't have the most resources in any given match, but that's kind of a given for United States unless you're playing treaty. Even so, despite this fact, you'll find you have enough resources to do whatever you need or want to do throughout the entire game. And that's the USA Gold Army strategy. I hope you enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you did, you can like and subscribe. Please tell me what kind of strategies I should make guides on, or even what strategies I should create. Um, have you ever had a cool idea for a build order or gameplay style for a Civ and just not known how to go about it effectively? If so, I'm your guy. And with that, I bid you adieu.
goes a salty mask. That's, that's the wrong choice. Bro, you want some Janakos. It's, a, it's like kind of become like a popular strat for some people to get these infinite outpost items. Dude, Dutch. That's one of the reasons I uh, decided to demon ink is I have a China deck that just spams fucking hand mortars. Cause I get so fucking sick of that. How's that? It's fine. Yeah, not in Mexico. It's three of them. Uh, Falcon nuts. How can that's your best scenario? Is that what you call for shot of shooters? Yeah, I could give you a tank unit if he goes foul to the turn of land, but it take that as tough as I know. There you go. Ah. Dude, I was about to have the entire trade trade route there. Trade Monopoly Mexico. Oh, Mexico's moving. Moving in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's out of it. Why would you go Creole against like a Creole? Just musketeers. Yeah. Yeah, the Brits are. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.